Hello ladies and gentlemen, Rahu Ketu has transited to their respective signs of Pisces and Virgo respectively. And we are starting to see some of the things that they are influencing people to go towards. So what are some of the things and how can we best tune ourselves with that consciousness so that we can try to become our best version. So that's exactly what we are going to discuss today because many people have been telling me from last two months at least. Even before this transit had happened, people had been telling me that they are seeing certain shifts and changes within them. So what are these changes? What are these shifts? And what is Rahu Ketu trying to tell us? That's exactly what we are going to discuss today. All right. And if you're new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you like this video after watching it in the end please hit the thumbs up and for consultations you can always go to my website down in the description section god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will surely find him especially because now rahu is in pisces and that's exactly what we are going to discuss today so rahu in Pisces and Ketu in Virgo. So you have to first understand what is Pisces and what is Virgo. And then you have to understand what is Rahu and what is Ketu. And then you can understand what do they do in these signs. So the sign of Pisces and Virgo, they are polar opposites. As you see, they are seven houses apart. So what does this mean? This means they represent complementary qualities. They don't represent conflicting energies the one seven axis is not conflicting energies they are complementary energies please do not forget this because <clears throat> whenever a planet is sitting in the seventh house from itself it is uh, from its lordship so for example if saturn is in leo or uh, cancer then it is seven houses away from its sign capricorn and aquarius then they say it's like a planet is in detriment all right but does this mean that a planet is gone to ruins and uh, it's good for nothing? Well, certainly not. What it means is that it is trying to complement itself. It is trying to find its, you could say, better half, but forgetting its, its own identity. That is where the challenge is. But they don't represent opposites. Okay, so the, the sign Pisces and Virgo they represent these two qualities. So if you take Virgo is the first sign that appears in the Kalpush Kuli, it's number 6 and Pisces is number 12. So if you see interestingly, maybe this is the only pair of signs which are both in the Dusthana houses. So the 6th house and 12th house, they are both Dusthana houses. What does this mean? This means both the energies are very difficult to handle. People say, oh, Pisces energy is very nice. Well, certainly it could be, but it's very difficult to get there. Okay. So once you get to Pisces, it is good, but to get there is not an easy task. It's it's a considerably a very daunting task. And what is Virgo? Virgo, Virgo you have to understand is the sign of Mercury. And not only Mercury, it's also the exaltation sign of Mercury. So it is the only sign which is ruled by a planet and the same planet gets exalted there. Okay. So Virgo represents all the critical thinking of this world. And then we have Pisces, which represents the, or the polar opposite of uh, critical thinking, which uh, is like uh, letting go and uh, letting things be the way they are. Okay. Now again, are these two opposite? Literally, well, well, they are not. But what they are trying to tell us is you need both the things in life. <clears throat> if you are only running towards critical thinking, uh, then you will be unhappy in life. And if you are only just leaving everything to God and destiny and the universe, then also you will be miserable. So you need a balance of both. Okay, You need to know when to put the effort and when to let go. If you read the Mahabharata, you will see there is this interesting pastime where Arjuna's son, Abhimanyu, is brutally murdered by seven Maharathis. And then what happens when Arjuna comes to know about this, he takes a vow that behind this conspiracy, there is only one person, not just one, but primarily the person who was responsible was Sindhuraj Jandrath. He was the king of Sindhu Desh. So, Therefore, Arjuna took sava, takes a vow that 
by tomorrow's sunset i will kill this jadrath or else i'll submit myself to fire to agni dev i'll burn myself i'll take agni samadhi if i cannot kill this jadrath by end of tomorrow's sunset okay and when arjuna takes a vow it's dead serious <laughs> it's not like a new year resolution and lord krishna is standing in front of him and then what happens Lord Krishna understands this is a very, very, very difficult task. It is almost impossible, but who knows? <laughs> Anything is possible when Krishna is there. So what happens? The next day, Arjuna tries his best. Drona arranges two, uh, two uh, enemy formations, which are known as viewers. Okay? So there is one view and then Arjuna breaks that and goes inside and inside there is another view. Okay? I won't get into the details of that fight. Arjuna ramblasts, chastises and defeats and crushes every single warrior that comes in front of him except Drona of course and then he bypasses Drona and he says you know who can defeat you after all you are you are undefeatable. <laughs> so except Drona he just he just flies he literally flies through every warrior and he's unstoppable on that day. Which day of the Kurukshetra war am I talking? Please write it down in the comments. Which day it was? Day number X, Y. <laughs> but then what happens? Arjuna fights, 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 fights and fights. But there are limitations. You know, the entire Kuru army came to stop him. You know, it was like at the end when the sun was almost about to set. There was like a sky of arrows falling from the uh, falling from the side of the Kauravas. And Arjuna was <coughs> handling all of these arrows all alone by himself. And he did everything. He defeated every single warrior except Rona and he went inside. But when all the warriors are fighting against you simultaneously breaking all the Chatriya cords, then Lord Krishna said, well, that's it. My devotee has done enough and now it is beyond his control and now the Kauravas are anyways as usual not um, paying heed to the rules of the war. They are not following the Chatriya courts and they are fighting against Arjuna <coughs> the same way they were fighting against Abhimanyu. Uh, and then Lord Krishna, he, he understood that now this is beyond Arjuna's control. So this real, this right that Arjuna has this is actually the sign of Virgo. And then what Krishna does, he, we know what he does, right? <laughs> he, he orders the Sudarshan Chakra to cover the sun. And when the Kauravas see that the sun is, uh, the sun has set, then Jaitarath comes out of the view of the, uh, uh, the army formation. And then he rejoices and he says, oh, what, what happened to your vow, oh, great son of Kunti, you know, when will you uh, submit yourself to fire? And then Lord Krishna, he uh, orders the Sudarshan Chakra to go out. And then the last rays of the sun, the last final rays fall into the battlefield of Kukshetra. And then Krishna says, Arjuna, that is the sun and here is Jaidarath. Okay, so... And then Arjuna, of course, he invokes uh, special weapons and he chops off the head of Jaidarath. Okay, so this thing which Krishna did, this is like Pisces. So Arjuna did everything, but at the end that was not enough. Because your best need not be the best or your best may not be the best. Sometimes you will hear people telling, oh, I did my best, but still it didn't happen. Well, maybe uh, your best was not sufficient or your best need not be the optimum that is required or that should be because everybody's best is different your best is different my best is different their best is different so therefore when you do your best and then at the end when your destiny your guru's blessings god's blessings the blessings of great souls mahat sevalam dwara ahur vimukteshu as the Srimad bhagavatam fifth canto says when you do this, when you do your part and then you leave the rest to God, then actually there is a transformation in life. But now there is a very peculiar thing which is happening. Now, generally the planet of actions is Rahu and the planet of letting go is actually Ketu. That is why Ketu gets 
kind of exalted, you know, in Scorpio, he does great in Pisces and Cancer and all this because these are signs which show that you need to let go. But now something very peculiar is happening. It's very weird. The energy is very weird because the planet which wants to do things, which does very good in Virgo, that is Rahu, is actually now in Pisces. And the planet which wants to let go of things is actually in Virgo. Now, this is a very, it's, it's a very difficult energy to handle or rather even to understand what to speak of handling. Even to understand this or to explain this is very difficult. <clears throat> so because of this, what is happening now? People, they are confused. Should I do something or should I not do something? Should I let go? Should I do? How much should I do? How much should I not do? Okay, so because of that, they are feeling that the universe is not doing justice to them, you know, which means they are putting efforts, but they are not getting results. But even they are confused, should you put efforts or not? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So the best thing to do during this period is to give 100% and then to leave the rest to God, okay? Even though Rahu is in Pisces, even though Ketu is in the sign of Virgo, you still have to do 100% because you have to do karma. You cannot just you know, say, oh, Rahu is in Pisces, I won't do anything. I will just leave it to the universe. You know, Rahu is intuition, blah, 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 all the fancy stuff you say, but you can't do it. You still have to go. And because Ketu is in Virgo, you have to do things with an attitude of detachment. Okay, Ketu doesn't like to do things, but you have to do it. You've got to do it. But with detachment. So if you do things with an outcome mentality, which is not wrong, but that should not go beyond a certain extent. If you do this, then you will be very depressed and very stressed and very messed up in your life. So therefore, please understand that this period, this transit is going to test your patience. It's going to test your surrender. It's going to test your devotion. It's going to test your faith, your ultimate wisdom, your ultimate patience, your strength, your mental health. It's going to test all this because it may force you to do things which you don't like or it may force you to not do anything which also is not good and neither you would like it. Okay, so therefore, please understand that this transit is an excellent time, excellent transit for people who understand the spiritual principles, the spiritual ethos, the Vedic tradition, and who do things in a detached manner, who do not get obsessed with things. You know, for them, this is an excellent transit. But if you fall in the other category, for you, it will be very difficult. So you have to try and see how you can balance out these energies. So give 100% but always understand that 100% may be the 1% or 99% or 99.9999% and still not be 100% of that which is required to be successful. And of course, which area will it be? That will depend on your chart, depending on your ascendant. So if uh, Rahu is uh, transiting in your uh, 10th house, you know, if 10th house is Pisces for you, then, you know, this will reflect in terms of career and Ketu uh, will be in your fourth house. You know? So that's how it will be. If it is in the one seven axis, it has something to do with your uh, marriage and with yourself. Okay, so that's how it is. So you have to see where is this transit falling as per ascendant and that will give you the answer. All right. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is too much worried about this energy. And for consultations, you can always go to my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you'll find him.